Hi right, folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And Monster Hunter Rise comes out... Uh, today, I guess. Assuming of course you're watching it today. And I've been waiting to make a monster. So when the lovely folk over at Capcom messaged me and said, Hey, how would you feel about making us a monster? I was like, yes. So this video is sponsored by Monster Hunter Rise. Follow the link in the description below to learn more. I like to start by making an armature since it's basically the bones of the model and bones tend to go on the inside. I found that if you make a body first and then try and add the bones later, it gets a bit messy. Unfortunately, I decided to make a magna malo and this was the best reference photo I could find, which is pretty much useless for scaling, so I'll have to do it the old fashioned way. I've chopped three equal lengths of thick gauge wire that I'll then stick together using some smaller wire and tape. Then I can bend the legs into the appropriate shape. I figured a Magnamalo was basically just an angry cat with spikes that periodically catches on fire, so I used a cat as the reference. Then I can mount it on a wide board to get the positioning right. I'll almost immediately remove him from this base while I do the majority of sculpting, but don't worry because this little MDF square is going to get his time in the spotlight later. Otherwise, it's time to add the first base layer of clay. This goes on somewhat haphazardly since I'm only interested in building up the chest and the butt. There's so much going on with this monster design that I know I'm going to have to bake the beast in multiple stages, so I'll start by getting the underside finished first. And once I'm happy with the shape, I can start adding the detail. Now there's two recurring themes with the Magnum Hollow, and those are plates and spikes with the underside being mostly plates and the top side being mostly spikes. I've cut a bunch of strips of thin clay which I'll layer one on top of the other all the way from the tip of the tail down to the chest. Now by starting at the tail I can make sure that the plates line up properly then I can come back through and add a little bit of texture. A couple thumb sized pieces will be the chest plates and I'll use my ball stylus to add the ridges before using the sharp end of my tool to cut the plates out, trying to get them to line up with the corresponding belly plates. Finally, I'll poke a bunch of tiny pinholes at the apex of each chest plate. These will eventually be filled with tiny spikes. Then it's into the oven for a first bake. By baking the model, I can add more detail without worrying about deforming what I've already made. It's kind of like making a real life save game. Then I can start to add the rest of the body. I'll add the legs first since the top of Kevin tends to overlap with the bottom and it's easier to get the detail added before anything else is in the way. Otherwise, the legs are pretty straightforward. You just make some vaguely feline looking legs, then add some toes, poke some itty bitty holes into the tips, stick some claws in, then add lots of plates and scales until it looks halfway between a tabby and a bearded dragon. Kevin also moonlights as a French Renaissance vampire, so make sure you add the frilly armbands. Finally, before I get started on the spiky top side, I'll give Kevin some tacits and then give him a bake. Same as before, I'll start at the tail and work my way up to the head. A couple long wormy dealies blended together will give me the fleshy bits underneath the armor and then I can add a spade shaped piece onto the tip which will be the tip, I guess. Then it's just a case of adding little wormy dealies and blending them together until I've got an appropriately shaped spiky protrusion. With the spiky fire stinger finished, I can get started on the back plates. I roll it on a long flat piece of clay that I can then chop down into smaller, roughly uniform pieces. I'll cut out small round notches in the end and get to work sticking them in place. Finally, a combination of pinching and rolling will give me the shape I want and I can add some texture with my silicone shapers. Now Kevin's got some big old spiky shoulder plates that run from his chest all the way down to his back, but they're designed in such a way that they still blend in with the rest of the body. So I've rolled out some Cruella de Vil shoulder pads that I'll blend into the pre-existing plates underneath. Then it's into the oven for another save and I can get started on those godforsaken spikes. I'll start by smushing a big blob of clay onto Kevin's back and then smoothing it out so that it blends in with the shoulders I just made. Then I can do the old rolly rolly to designate where the spikes will go before getting to work painstakingly sticking spikes in place. 
Now you may be wondering, why does any creature need this many spikes? Well, it's quite simple. Monster Hunter is all about hunting monsters, slaying them, and harvesting their parts to make armor in order to hunt more monsters to slay so you can make more armor and hunt more monsters. And everyone knows, spiky armor is the best armor, which is why Kevin is the top dog here. Or the top cat, I guess. Anyways, he's got lots of spikes for a good reason. That being said, I never want to make another spike again. So for a mental spike break, it's time to make his head. I'll start with a ball of clay and then spend the next two or three hours trying to figure out how the hell to make this look like it's supposed to. It took me a good three tries before I was finally able to settle on a cross between a grumpy cat and Falcor. The biggest issue I encountered was that so much of his face shape relies on the horns, and without them, he really does look like a goofy lion. Fortunately, once I got the teeth in place and some of the random wavy bits pressed in, he was starting to look a little bit better. Now, I know that his head is pretty big for his body, but hey, my head is pretty big for my body, and I don't think we should be head size shaming here. This is a safe space for those of us that live with cranial enormosity. Otherwise, it's time to make a few more spikes to blend the head into the body, and then I can drill a couple holes in the top of his head so I can mount a wire for his horns. I'll start by covering the wire in clay, and then realize that I need to somehow add more wire so that I can add the other parts of the horn. In hindsight, I kind of wish that I'd made the horns separately and then just attached them to the body, but they say that hindsight is 2020 and 2020 was a terrible year, so maybe this was the right way to go about it after all. Then the absolute final part is to add his arm, claw, sword things in much the same manner as I made for the horns, complete with the realization that I should have just made them separately and then glued them on afterwards. Learning from your mistakes is hard. Otherwise, it's into the oven for one final bake, and then it's on to prime time. Now, Kevin has a lot of cracks and recesses, so to make my life easier, I'm gonna give him a black base coat. The black base coat means that all the shading is kinda already done for me, assuming I don't go too heavy with the paints. To that end, I'm gonna be doing most of the painting with a heavy dry brushing. Basically, you put some paint on your brush and then wipe the majority off so your brush is mostly dry, then you go ham on the model. The brush will leave behind a tiny bit of paint that will settle on any of the raised sections, and it's ideal for models like this because there are so many spikes. I painted Kevin mostly purple, but any of the exposed fleshy sections underneath get a reddish brick color that I'll then use to highlight the sections between the plates as well as covering his underside. Then I'll tint it with a bit of white so that I can add some highlights. This will dry close to the original color, but should add a little variation to the otherwise flat colors. Then I can start painting all the bones and spikes. I'll paint the tail, claws, horns, and teeth the usual way, but dry brush the spikes so that they retain some of that purple base coat. I think it really makes them look well-worn since it's not just one solid color. Finally, to give some of the brighter bony parts a bit of shading, I'll paint the top with a darker wash and highlight some of the recesses before coming back through with that original bone to give the edges a bit of a highlight. Then before I forget, I'll paint the little purpley fire spots on his frilly arms with a dark to bright purple blend. Then as promised, it's time to bring back that MDF board that will be the base of our base. Now, Monster Hunter Rise takes place in the Japanese-inspired land of Kimura, and one of my favorite locations are the Shrine Ruins. It also happens to be where I ended up fighting, and subsequently dying at the claws of... Kevin. When fights can last upwards of 20 minutes, being impatient is bad... And I'm very, very impatient. Anyways, the plan is to have Kevin standing at the edge of one of the little rivers that runs across the landscape, so I'm carving up a foam block to make the ground cover. I'll then glue them onto the base, shave the edges down, then finally shape the riverbank. I would like to point out that I managed to do all of this cutting without the need for a single bandage. I'm getting better. Now I've got this lovely rock that I can use to add rocky texture to the foam. Before filling all the gaps with some gap filler. This will hide the seams between the chunks of foam so that it looks like a single unbroken piece of earth. Finally, to add a bit of texture variation in the water, I'll add my homemade dirt paste, which I'll spread liberally across the riverbed. And then once it's had ample time to dry, I'll prime the base black. 
Then I can paint the entire surface with a stone gray and then dry brush it with progressively lighter tints to highlight all the sharp edges. And then finally to add a little bit of moss and greenish ground cover, I'll use this little sponge I found in the bathroom cabinet to add little clumps of green paint. Now I'm never one to pass up the chance to add static grass, so I'm gonna add some static grass. And I'd love to show you the process of how I add that grass, but apparently I turned the camera off because I'm selfish and I wasn't willing to share the experience. I did, however, record myself adding the little bits of detritus, which are tiny sticks and bits of bark from outside that I baked then put in a blender. A couple drops of super glue will hold these in place and I can get on to making the water. Now with my riverbed ready, I can drop Kevin in place and then start adding some of the surface stuff. The same homemade detritus will get added all willy-nilly, and then I'll sprinkle some tiny green plant flakes onto the surface. And I also ended up tossing some rocks into the water to make the bottom a bit more exciting. I also dragged a bit of the resin onto Kevin's legs, so it looks like he's been waiting around and he's not quite so dry. 24 hours later, the resin should be cured so I can pop the frame off and clean up the edges. Then I'll cover the resin with a thin layer of gloss Mod Podge and then use my airbrush to blow it around. When it cures, it'll be crystal clear and should look like little water ripples. I'll also add little waves around Kevin's feet so it looks like he's at least got some movement. Then the only thing left to do is to light our fiery boy on fire. I want to make the plumes of fire out of silicone, but I need something to attach the silicone to. So I'm going to make an armature out of translucent clay that's been tinted ever so slightly purple. I'll then roll out a bunch of oddly shaped wormy dealies and throw them in the oven. While they're baking, I'll make my fire. This is one part clear silicone tinted with a single drop of purple dye. And once the armatures are cured, I can glue them in place with a little super glue and then I can start slopping on my purple fire. I'll apply a decent amount of the light purple fire first, then once I built up the base a bit, I'll add another drop to the silicone so that I can give the fire some darker tips. Finally, I want to smooth the fire out and give it a bit of shape that isn't just random blobs of silicone, so I've got a rounded silicone shaper that I'll use to poke and prod the silicone into shape. The key here is having a little bowl of isopropyl alcohol on hand so that I can constantly dip the tool. The alcohol will keep the tool from sticking to the silicone, which will essentially allow me to sculpt the fire. Otherwise, once that's given ample time to dry, we're uh, on to the glamour shots. There you have it folks, I hope you enjoyed this one as I've been wanting to make a Monster Hunter monster for ages now, so a massive thank you to Capcom for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description below to see what all the fuss is about. The game releases today on PC with a bevy of improvements, and having played it for more than a few hours on the Switch, I highly recommend you give it a look-see. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers!